US will stock its army with modernized equipment thanks to Ukraine war aid. Thanks to providing military equipment to Ukraine, the United States of America has been able to equip its own army with updated technology, informs the Telegraph. As the source writes, the Pentagon is essentially transferring its old weapons to Ukraine while receiving funds from the budget to purchase next-generation armaments. Quite literally, the roughly $140 billion the United States is spending on Ukraine through the war's first three years is actually funding a major modernization drive for the U.S. military, the source states. In particular, the U.S. has provided Ukraine with M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles from the 1990s. In exchange, the new BMPs were purchased from the manufacturer. Moreover, as confirmed by the Pentagon, the U.S. Army receives full replacement. For every old Bradley donated to Ukraine, the American troops receive one new Bradley with all modern features. It's interesting that the new vehicles received by the United States were manufactured, taking into account their performance in the fields of Zaporizhia and Donbass. One of the main innovations is the Iron Fist Active Protection System, which intercepts missiles and drones in flight. This system has been previously used in Israel, but its use in the war in Ukraine, where drones have become dominant on the battlefield, prompted the United States to increase investments in implementing active protection systems on armored vehicles. In April, the United States announced one of the largest aid packages to Ukraine worth $60 billion. A spokesperson for the U.S. State Department, Matthew Miller, stated that the United States will announce the delivery of new arms packages to Ukraine in the coming weeks. Russians losing thousands of vehicles attack positions of Ukrainian army with motorcycles. Russia lost thousands of military vehicles in the first two years of the war with Ukraine and the production of new equipment as well as the restoration of old vehicles from long-term storage does not make up for the losses. That's why in the third year of a large-scale war, more and more Russian soldiers are going into battle in trucks, open golf carts and, more recently, motorcycles, Forbes writes. According to the publication, a fast, maneuverable and inexpensive motorcycle is an effective way to move around the battlefield for a courier or scout. The problem for Russian troops in 2024 is that, lacking dedicated armoured vehicles as well as larger civilian vehicles, they are riding their unprotected motorcycles straight into Ukrainian positions, just as they started doing a few months ago with their Desert Cross 1000 all-terrain vehicles and, as a result, get hit in the teeth, the publication writes. Thus, on April the 15th, the 92nd Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Army repelled an attack by Russian motorcycle troops near Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. Three weeks later, around May the 7th, the Ukrainian 79th Air Assault Brigade destroyed eight motorcycles during the assault on Novomikhailovka, also in the east of the country. However, despite the losses, at least one Russian unit still uses motorcycles as assault equipment. The Zarya Battalion of the Russian Army's 123rd Motorized Rifle Brigade says motorcycles are faster and harder to detect than heavier, slower armored vehicles. At the same time, the Russians are improving their military motorcycles in the same way they improved their turtle tanks. Thus, writes Forbes, in order to reduce the threat from Ukrainian high-speed drones, which have been seen more than once in pursuit of Russian motorcyclists, some Russian units covered their motorcycles with a metal mesh. However, this does not stop the Ukrainian armed forces as confirmed by videos of the destruction of Russian motorcyclists published online. It was previously reported that the Russian occupation forces began using Chinese Desert Cross 1003 all-terrain vehicles on the front line. In addition, the military reported that the occupiers were actively transporting personnel on two-wheeled motorcycles to the front line. Complete ruins and death. The village of Rabatino of Ukraine no longer exists. The village of Rabotino, which became the most famous point of last year's counter-offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces, no longer exists today. Now it is a continuous heap of ruins in the bare steppe where corpses of Russian invaders and burnt equipment of the invaders lie between heaps of broken stones. A visual understanding of what the territory of the village looks like now is provided by a video shot from a drone by soldiers of the 3rd Spartan Operational Brigade. The Ukrainian monitoring project Deep State notes that these images illustrate Russian war tactics. Everything around is strewn with corpses, burnt Russian equipment, but they continue to climb like zombies endlessly. 
you can see the consequences of Banzai attacks in the form of a knocked out unit or single remains of monsters in trenches, pits and ruins. It's difficult for the Russians to gain a foothold there because they themselves raised everything to the ground, analysts say. It is noted that the situation around the former village of Rabotino remains very complex and dynamic. It's just a continuous grey area, ruins and death that Russians bring with it, they say in deep state. According to data in open sources, the village of Rabotino was founded in 1869, although it existed as a farm at least half a century before that. In those days, Tsarism actively promoted the settlement of the Black Sea region by various peoples, but this village was precisely Ukrainian. According to the 2001 census, about 480 people lived in the village. On March the 6th, 2022, the village was captured by Russian invaders and was under Russian control until August 2023. The battles for the liberation of the village began on August the 7th, 2023, and on August 23rd, it was finally cleared of invaders. During these battles, Ukrainian fighters evacuated the last residents of the village who were still there. Rabotino became the southernmost point of the Ukrainian counteroffensive in this direction. Since the beginning of 2024, the Russians have been making significant efforts to return under their control what is left of the village in order to eliminate on the map all the achievements of the summer counteroffensive of the Ukrainian armed forces.